Now we're looking at the anterior aspect of a real human skull. So what we can see here, uh, firstly, the supraorbital foramen. So here we have the orbit just superior to the orbit. There's a little hole there. That's the supraorbital foramen. And then inferior to the orbit, we have the infraorbital foramen. If we then look into the orbit itself, we can see that there's a couple of cracks or fissures in the orbit. So if we're looking at the posterior part of the orbit, we can see one here that's on the superior aspect. So that's the superior orbital fissure. And then if we look on a slightly different angle, we can see the inferior orbital fissure here. So two fissures there or cracks in the orbit, just superior and inferior orbital fissures. If we just change the angle slightly, we can see next to the superior orbital fissure, this little opening here. Now that is the optic canal. So that one there, just medial to the superior orbital fissure, is the optic canal. And then if we move to look at the medial aspect of the, the orbit again, here we've got nasal, maxilla and then lacrimal bones. And here in the inferior aspect of the lacrimal bone is the nasolacrimal canal. So that's the nasolacrimal canal. And where's that going? Where does, where's the other end of that canal? It's in the nasal cavity. Yeah, great. And then if we have a look at the nasal cavity from an anterior point of view, firstly we can see the septum and notice that it's a little bit deviated and that's normal. The superior part is part of the ethmoid bone. The inferior part, and it's only very small at the anterior aspect here, that's made up of the vomer. And we can also see either side these structures here which are the inferior nasal concave. Now remember the inferior nasal concave, if we're just looking at one, is a separate bone. So the inferior nasal concave is a bone in its own right. Whereas the one above it, the middle nasal concave, is part of the ethmoid bone. So this is beautiful specimen here where we can see inferior and middle nasal concave, they're separate from each other. Now there is a superior one, but we can't really see it from this point of view. Now then, if we move around to have a look at this skull from the lateral point of view, we can see some other features there. Firstly, this the most uh, the bump that sticks out the most here on the posterior aspect, the most prominent one, will be the external occipital protuberance. Now they're quite variable. Sometimes they're very visible and very palpable, and sometimes it's a fairly flat kind of region. But this one, quite visible, external occipital protuberance. Then we have the external acoustic meatus. Now that's this tunnel here, commonly known as your ear hole. So that's where the sound waves will travel through the temporal bone there to reach the middle and inner ears. Then we have just inferior and posterior to that. This bump here is the mastoid process. If I just turn the skull there, you can see the shape of that mastoid process. Just uh, in front of that, anterior to that, we have the zygomatic arch. So that structure there, and if we just tilt it around again, you can see this is the zygomatic arch here. Partly temporal bone and partly zygomatic bone. And then lastly, between those two, so between the zygomatic arch and the mastoid process, there's a tiny little process here called the styloid process. And it's this tiny little spur, like a tiny little nail that's protruding. Ah, oh, there we go, that's better. Tiny little structure here. has a couple of muscles attaching to it. That's the styloid process. Quite delicate on a real skull, so please be careful if you're looking at them.